Right now, we're witnessing modern society undergoing a failure state. A very interesting and unusual failure state. A crisis of meaning. Scientific understanding has brought with it a wealth of intellectual and technological benefits. I, with open arms, welcome every aspect of that. However, our still young understanding of the physical processes that underpin reality seem to have subsequently dulled our sense that there is anything profoundly meaningful about it. About the universe. The universe is unthinkably vast, with very little that individual human beings can do to feel relevant in that context. If you think about it, the average person in society now lives a much more socially isolated life than people have done in centuries prior. The average person rolls out of bed to go and work for some big corporation who doesn't know their name, doesn't really care about them, and honestly probably doesn't even really produce anything fantastic for society. And it's not as if the people working for it usually believe in the mission of the corporation. That's just not really the setup. It's about making money. People's lives are about making money. And feeling like you have to do something completely meaningless for your entire life just so you can earn enough money to survive is not a particularly good situation. I don't think anyone wise would choose that for themselves. And yet most of us end up in that situation. In fact, not only do people not really believe in the mission of whatever corporation they work for, usually, but they tend to actually see them as destructive. You don't see people on the streets talking about how much they love their job and how much they love corporations and how much they love institutions. Does that seem right? Like the optimal solution would be something which the average person hates? Is that what we're going with? At least on a very surface level, it seems pretty suboptimal, doesn't it? To compound all this, the discoveries of science have reduced the mysteries of the past to mere understandable phenomena. We seem to have concluded that the universe can effectively be reduced to a space filled with atoms simply acting mechanistically, and nothing more. Which is a state of affairs which inherently has no meaning, not unless you invent your own. And inventing your own is a bit like covering your eyes and ears and pretending you're in a fantasy world. It's like science has reduced reality to this pitiful visage compared to the mystical unknowns of thousands of years ago. Think of all the meaning people were able to breathe into things because they ultimately didn't know any better. Think how much more profound their lives probably felt because of it. I've previously made the case that society is like a branching tree, with beliefs stemming from deeper beliefs, stemming from even deeper beliefs, stemming from some grounding. This visual is actually quite crude and simplified, so try not to get too lost in the model. My point is that the foundations of our society are a primary concern, insofar as the correct foundation even allows us to ask the right questions about our true purpose in this universe, to explore the avenues necessary to ascend towards knowing what we ought to be doing as a species, and what ought is to our civilization as a whole, filters down to individuals as meaning. My observation is, if there are correct foundational assumptions objectively, if, just hypothetically, if this is true, it would allow us to ask the right questions and formulate the right beliefs that point in the right direction. And you can see how, on some level, that would produce a society which does what it's meant to do, objectively. It wouldn't conform to whatever arbitrary cultural sensibilities that we have, it would just take the most fundamental aspects that we should ultimately care about, and then optimise for the best outcomes and then all the variability of individuals would still be broadly occurring in the direction of existing in society in a positive way. The term meaning refers to an implied or explicit significance, or some worthwhile quality. But significant or worthwhile in relation to what? Well, I would argue significant or worthwhile in relation to some deep element, either at or near the base of this model and that the ideal case would be for us to identify the foundational truth of our reality and place it at the base of this model. The problem is that while science has opened our eyes to an extraordinary understanding of the universe and an ability to manipulate various aspects of it to create technology, it has also, at least in the short term, been a gateway towards existential nihilism. We each, entire societies and individuals alike, move in different directions, and act as though any direction of one's choosing is just as good as any other. We aren't moving in unity towards a vision of the future, 
and I argue this is broadly not a good thing. It could be worse, of course, we could be moving in unity towards something terrible. But if you're on a moving landscape, moving randomly and moving backwards are roughly equally bad. And the landscape of the universe is pushing us back. Entropy drags everything in towards chaos unless we work actively to maintain and improve it. So we must move forwards. And forwards, in this case, means we must move towards truth. Not because we like it, but because it's true. And that might seem harsh, but consider the fact that one's enjoyment in and of itself is a truth of reality. So an ultimate truth would factor in that element. The pursuit of truth doesn't mean we ignore what it is that makes us happy, it means that we do what we ought to do, given all things, all considerations, all in their proper places and in their proper proportions. Human happiness included. We might even discover that human happiness is the most important thing in the universe, and then optimise ways of pursuing it. Or we might discover that's not the case, but whatever the case may be, if it's the truth, it will have its reasons. That's what truth is. I do find it interesting to think about the historical context to indicate how a proper framing can arrange societies to aim at some higher goal, and it can assist people in accepting playing a small part in doing this, rather than pursuing immediate gratification all for themselves. Of course, that's not to say the historical society in question aimed at something actually worthwhile, but that's yet another variable. A medieval peasant, for example, would have had to do back-breaking work just to scrape by and stay alive. But they did it. Now, of course, they did it because they needed to survive, but they also did it because the most well-studied scholars at the time told them that the highest good is serving God, and that the king has been chosen as God's mortal representative on Earth. So when a lord gives a peasant some land, and then subsequently takes almost all the things the peasant managed to produce in the form of taxes, the peasant knows the king was chosen by God, and the lord was chosen by the king, and that the peasant was chosen by the lord. So in this very roundabout way, the peasant's suffering, at least in the mind of the peasant, is justified as part of a greater plan set in place by God himself, and therefore far greater than the peasant is able to understand. And even if they suffered cruelty and famine and war and death, they believed there was a reason for it all. They believed that in the end they would be rewarded by God for having played their part. Now, being a medieval peasant is a pretty bleak existence, and almost nobody would really believe this particular framing in the modern age, but that's how powerful a strong foundational belief is for a person. People seem to think that they're beyond that way of thinking in the modern age, but that's not true. Religion is still quite prevalent, very much so, depending on the part of the world we're talking about. And if you take a non-religious person who isn't non-religious due to some strong rational ideals, then they still likely believe in some light version of their geographically local faith, or something like karma or astrology. Something that takes the place where religion once was. It could be some other ideal, even, like a strong political position, or maybe patriotism, or environmental conservationism. If you dig around, there's probably something you picture as the goal humanity should be striving for, and either you've been lucky enough to make that something you do for work, or otherwise it's something you picture yourself contributing to after you win the lottery, or retire, or in your dreams when you get elected as the leader of your country. And depending how important that thing is to you, if only you had the opportunity to, you might give up almost everything to pursue it, because it's the thing that matters more than anything as far as you're concerned. The power of ideals still exists, but in the modern age, Human understanding of the universe has moved around so aggressively in such a short period of time that the waters have been muddied, and we've become short-sighted and reactionary. We've lost our existential directionality. Imagine if we could get everyday people in the modern age to feel like the work that they are doing is truly progressing us all towards a higher goal. Would that defeat the crisis of meaning? I think it just might. And now, imagine if that higher goal was actually real, actually true, and actually the highest thing both an individual or the civilization as a whole could point itself at. How extraordinary would that be? Just hypothetically. That possibility is what I'm trying to get you to consider. People used to begin construction on cathedrals that would take 500 years to complete. 
people, human beings like you and me, they designed them, they laid stone, they began the effort, knowing they would never see the finished structure. But they did it all the same. They did it because they wanted to, because they believed that creating it was one of the greatest contributions they could give to the world. They chose to give, they were happy to do it. In the service of their highest ideals, almost anybody will choose to give. It fulfills the old proverb, a society grows great when old men plant trees in whose shade they shall never sit. But now it's more crucial than ever before, because it's the 21st century. We have technology, we have a world of global interdependence. It's looking like we are on the cusp of artificial general intelligence, which means artificial super intelligence almost certainly won't be far behind. We are actively developing viable interplanetary technology, and we are consistently creeping closer to sources of near infinite quantities of energy. We need to figure out what we are meant to be pointing ourselves at. If we don't figure out what direction our species is meant to be moving in, and soon, things have the potential to be disastrous. I suppose the position I'm really trying to get across is we should create a universal ethos, a sort of metaphysical model, stroke, mythology, stroke, guidebook to being human, that applies equally for all peoples in all times, totally optimized to inspire alignment in conscious beings towards the highest truths and the greatest goods we can possibly conceive of. If we achieved that, if, and if we did so without fudging it, without corrupting the effort, if we achieved it truly, we could change the world forever. It would tell us what trees the old men should plant. It would tell us what monolithic structures our civilization should actually build. For now, I'll leave you with that thought. But for next time, consider the following question. How would you construct a metaphysical framework that explains all of reality and with which nobody would disagree? I've wrestled with this problem for some time and I'd like to begin laying out the insights I've come across. From there, together, we can begin charting the course towards a fully realized answer to this question. But that's everything from me for now. Please leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.